Hello everyone, welcome to another twin motion video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the foliage material. The foliage material is a material type that you can fully customize and use to create all types of vegetation, such as trees, leaves, bark, stems, flowers, etc. You can fine tune the look and feel of the foliage material and apply it to the assets you import into twin motion. So let's get started. If we go to the twin motion vegetation container and we go into trees and we use one of the existing trees in the twin motion library, we will see that it is already responsive to things like wind and changing of the season. So if we go outside and we just place one of these trees down, if we look up close at the leaves, we'll see that the leaves are already in motion and responding to the wind. And if we go to our ambience panel and we modify the seasons, we will see that the leaves respond to the changing of the seasons as well. However, if we place in a piece of vegetation from something like Quixel Megascans or Sketchfab or any other custom downloaded content that we have, when we bring it into Twin Motion, we will see that that item is often static. It has no response to the wind system inside of Twin Motion and it will also not respond to the changing of the seasons. In this example, I'm going to take this item and I'm just going to make the leaves responsive to Twin Motion's wind as well as seasonal effects using the foliage material. The Twin Motion foliage material is highly customizable in terms of the visuals and the appearance. What I'm going to do in this example is just take the existing maps from this material and I'm going to make it compatible with the Twin Motion weather system. To do this, the first thing that you will need to do is to grab the material of the item that you want to convert. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard, which is the shortcut for material picker, or you can select it from the top. And I'm going to click on the material to get its properties. I'm also going to open up my materials panel down here because I'm going to be using that shortly. So with the materials selected, if you scroll down on the properties and under the color panel, if you expand the details section, you will find a texture map that is currently applied. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new material. So if I look at this box over here, I will see that there is a small little solid section in the bottom right hand corner over here. If I click on that part of it, it'll give me all of the available materials that Twin Motion offers and I can select the foliage material. Once that material has been created, I can rename it if I want to and then go over to its properties on the right hand side. Again, under the color panel, texture, I can select this and I can paste the texture into this location over here. Now grabbing this material and dragging it into the plant will allow me to make it responsive with Twin Motion's wind as well as seasonal effects. There are a lot of adjustments that I am still going to do, but something that I want to point out is that the way that this particular piece of vegetation has been loaded into Twin Motion is it's been separated into two different materials. So I'll see that some of the leaves are in motion and others aren't. So what I'm going to do is just repeat that process again, and I'm going to create an additional material for the other half of the leaves. Once that material has been created, I can drag and drop. So with the twin motion foliage material applied, I now have a fully responsive wind system as well as changes to the seasons. So if I just collapse my materials and I go to my ambience panel and I modify the seasons, you'll see that I will now have my foliage material reacting to the changing of the seasons. By the way, this can be customized quite extensively, which we will get to in a second. So let's start to look at some of the options that we have available to us with our new material that we have created. I'll select on the foliage material to select it and in my properties on the right hand side, the first thing that I want to take a look at is the back face fade. The back face fade is used to simulate the effect where the back face of the foliage appears paler or lighter than the front. So if I just modify this right now, I will see basically no difference or very little. But if I start to go a bit closer, and I look at the underside of this information and I start to increase or decrease it, I can see that the underside starts to look a little bit lighter and a little bit paler. If we look at tint, there are a couple of things we can do here. Firstly, we can open the color picker and we can just choose a new color to completely tint the material that color. Alternatively, we can again go and copy a map from the existing texture and paste that into the mask. So if I go and copy my existing texture and I paste it into my tint mask color, 
and I now go and adjust my tint, you'll see that it all automatically transforms it into a black and white image because the tint color mask is a user defined texture that defines which areas of the base color texture are tinted. So if it's black, black represents the areas that are not tinted and white represents the areas that are tinted. So if I now apply a red color, I will see that it only applies the red color to the areas that are masked. And of course I can invert that color as well. I will remove the color mask as well as reset the tint. We have a translucency setting as well, which defines how much light transmits through the surface from the lit side to the dark side that faces away from the light source. So as we increase, we can see that effect taking place. The main features about the foliage material type that I want to mention are found in the foliage and the seasons panel. Firstly, just to break down what everything here means, if we go to use global seasons, when selected, the seasonal color and leaf variations of this foliage material automatically follow the twin motion seasons and weather conditions found in the ambience panel. So if I apply use global seasons to both of my materials and I go to ambience and I adjust my seasons, I'll see that they just respond to the regular seasonal sliders from the ambience panel. Fourth season, when this is selected, the seasonal life cycle of vegetation and the color of leaves are overridden and controlled by this seasonal slider right here. So for example, I can permanently set this to, let's just say right there, let me switch to my other material and roughly match that up. Now, if I go to my ambience panel and I adjust the seasons here, notice that there is absolutely no change taking effect with this piece of vegetation because using the four season overrides the ambience settings. For now, I'm just gonna reset these back to nothing. I will leave the settings set to four season for now, just so that we can demonstrate season color as well as leaves life cycle sliders. Season color, depending on the gradient that you choose, you'll see that you have a number of different options. This setting determines the color of the material over the course of the seasons. This band directly applies to the slider, which I'll break down shortly. Then finally, we have a leaves life cycle. So depending on the gradient that you choose, once again, this setting determines when leaves or flowers grow or fall over the course of the seasons. Let's start with the season color. If we zoom into this tile a little bit, the first thing that I want to point out is that this band over here is a visualization of this slider. If we isolate just the areas, in the colored band and we look how that relates to the slider you'll notice that this band starts let's say roughly here and it ends at maybe just over halfway so this effect is only going to take place between this section of the slider anywhere else there are going to be no effects that you will see visually with your material demonstrate this I'm going to actually switch off the leaves life cycle for now so I'm going to set that to none just so that we can deal with the season color in isolation so if I start to move the slider you'll notice that nothing happens at the beginning and I'm about to enter the colored section right here so as I hit that and I start to progress through the slider you'll see that my seasonal effects are taking place and as soon as I get to roughly halfway maybe just after halfway the entire life cycle has basically taken place and now for the remainder of this season everything just remains the same so to zoom into this location again anything that is represented by a black band these sections are just going to be your regular materials so during these two black band areas right here we're just going to essentially have no effect, no seasonal effect. It'll just be the default material that will be displayed. As soon as we enter into those bands, we'll start the coloring. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse these. I'm going to switch off the season color and I'm going to turn on the leaves life cycle. Let's say we use the season mask 03 right here. So this works in exactly the same way. If we zoom in close, wherever we see a black band, that is where the leaves are going to fall. During that black band phase, which is roughly, let's say right here, there'll be no leaves on the tree at this location. Everywhere else in the slider, it will just have full leaves as usual. So the white bands 
represent no change. The black bands represent the leaves falling. As we move our slide over here, you'll notice that nothing happens, nothing happens until we get to roughly halfway. Okay, as soon as we hit that black band, you'll see that the leaves are starting to disappear. Okay, and obviously as we enter the other side or exiting the black band, they start to reappear. And then as soon as we get to roughly where the white band is, no change is gonna occur. And we can use these in conjunction with one another. So we can have both maps applied and you can see that you have a number of different gradients. And again, just to reiterate, wherever there is color for the season color, that is where you will actually find changes to the leaves during that section or that portion of the slider. All right, so we'll have colors here in the beginning to again, roughly halfway, and then for the rest of it, there'll be nothing. But you'll notice that we also have a dying of leaves because as we finish with our season color, we basically have a leaf life cycle kicking in. So it'll go through the various color phases and then as we exit that, it'll start to kill off the leaves and then it'll bring it back. And because there is black here and white here, it means that for this end section, the back portion of the slider, there will be absolutely no change that occurs because we don't have any gradients that affect the slider at this location. So how we choose to combine these two things, the season color gradient, as well as the leaves life cycle, we can start to create some very interesting and customized conditions for our leaves. That is everything that I wanted to show you in today's video. I really hope that you found this information helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.